the past decade for me is a lost decade for Europe. We didn't reform, we didn't progress, we fixed some crises with emergency answers, but we didn't move forward and propose anything new. For me, the main answer to that is to be more ambitious with Europe, with inner circles proposals. And that's what I want to launch in the coming weeks, to say we need more ambition for Europe, or at least for those in Europe who are ready to move forward and be more integrated from an economic point of view, have a common answer in terms of defense and security, a common answer, a common answer in terms of digital challenges, energy and climate, and so on. So we need more ambition. We need to launch a new process, a more democratic process. That's why I launched this uh, democratic conventions for beginning of the next year. And I hope to create a momentum and a dynamic with all the countries. For me, that's the best answer to Brexit. Why? Because I don't want to spend months and months discussing about a divorce. That's a British decision. The divorce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a British decision to uh, vote for a Brexit. I do respect this decision. If we are ready to present a new visage of the EU, and within the EU these inner circles, if we show that Europe can be an actual economic, diplomatic, and military power, I do believe that we can convince a lot of people to join the club. Okay. And, and for me, during the past decade, the past decade pro-Europeans didn't dare to defend Europe. People in the Eurozone didn't dare to gather themselves. Why? Because they didn't want to uh, be too tough with the Brits or the Poles or some others, because they were not part of the very inner circle. At the end of the day, these guys stopped desiring more Europe. Now, what we, have, what we need is more desire for Europe more ambition. Why do you think somebody like Hillary Clinton, who believed in all these things you said, and somebody like David Cameron, who was at heart a Remainer, why do you think they, they didn't put up a big enough fight? Or why do you think they lost? I mean, I'm, not, uh, I'm probably not the best entitled to comment elections in other countries. So I want to be very, very humble. I think for m Mrs. Clinton, that I, who I do, whom I do respect, uh, uh, is probably due to the fact that the perception of your people was that she was less middle class as candidates than Mr. Trump, which is a big issue. And, and as I told you, she was pictured, I'm not saying it's true, but she was pictured as a candidate of the elite. And I think if you don't put yourself uh, with an answer to better regulate this globalization and to give more power to, to middle classes, it's impossible to convince in current democracy. And I think it's more or less the same issue with the Brexit. First of all, David Cameron didn't properly defend the yes and the remain. It was a remain but. And he already lost at the very beginning when, when it was not clear about the strong willingness. Because when you have all this no in front of you, you have to be a strong believer, not an ambiguous believer of the European idea. I remember before the election, you said this is a great moment for France to go in the opposite direction of the prevailing trends. You know, take on anti-globalization, take on populism. What made you do that and believe that you could win doing that? Because I know the outcome of this trend. It's war. At the end of the day, it's all about how to fight against each other. And it's all about war. The big question today is how to rebuild our multilateralism. So during the past two decades, inequality has increased like crazy. That's a big issue for all our middle classes. And that's the very beginning of this crisis of globalization. But second, we have to deal with climate change, terrorism, migration. All these issues are global issues. So we need multilateralism. We need to be strongly coordinated and to protect our common goals and common values.